Okay, today we're going to be looking at Vortex Ring. Um, you might have heard this referred to as settling with power before. Uh, sort of the same thing as what the Americans tend to refer this um, as. Uh, it's, there's, there's slight differences, uh, but for your purposes, Vortex Ring. Really important to know because you run the risk of getting into this situation, which can be very, very hazardous um, on a lot of most approaches, if anything, and then a few other dynamic maneuvers as well. Uh, all normal references um, and uh, pretty much every publication you have will say roughly the same thing. Um, okay, so to start with, with this one, I'd recommend you just use a single picture of a helicopter and then just use two uh, vector diagrams. Okay, so there you go. Um, ideally, just keep the um, the cross sections uh, at the same pitch. There's a marginally larger pitch at the root on mine to reflect the actual sort of change in, in the washout there. Um, but what we're going to use here is the uh, aircraft in a high hover. So we'll just imagine um, you're anywhere outside of ground effect, it doesn't really matter. And as you know, if we're sat in a hover outside of ground effect, we generally speaking end up inducing a large amount of flow through the disc. So something to remember from um, the translational lift is that actually all helicopters, when they're in hover, uh, just like aeroplanes, um, at the end of the wing tips and or at the end of the blade tips in this particular case, uh, we generate uh, tip vortices. Uh, the reason being is uh, you're obviously getting an element of high pressure underneath here and low pressure where the air is being sucked down through the disc. And generally speaking, what happens is the uh, as is the air um, starts to leak over the edge of the disc here. Okay, so we end up with essentially tip vortices just like you would see at the end of a wing for an airliner and you might remember which is quite important to understand at this point now as well is uh, and translational lift when we start to move the aircraft forwards then what actually happens is we're starting to move this aircraft away from these vortices um, so at this point we've got the induced flow coming down through the disc but we're also creating uh, uh, the tip vortices which as you can see are coming round and they're exacerbating that induced flow uh, in the region of the tip. So we can now add that bit onto the vector diagrams then so we get our start point. So what I'm going to do here is assume that we're having a, an element um, of additional airflow at the tip which is giving us a slightly higher um, induced flow and at the root we'll just assume we've got a slightly lower. You don't actually need to do this at all you can keep the induced flow exactly the same because you'll have the same effect at the end. So we've got our induced flow and we've got a relative airflow, which is the resultant from that one. And that therefore is going to be giving us our angle of attack. We don't need to draw on, but I'm going to draw on anyway. It's going to give us our lift. So there's our start point. Right, so now let's assume that uh, for whatever reason we're in the hover um, and we've started uh, an inadvertent or um, a deliberate descent. To do that, we're going to lower the collective um, and the aircraft is going to start to descend downwards. Now, when it starts to descend downwards, the aircraft now is going to start to experience an airflow coming up from underneath uh, because we're essentially descending down into a, a static column of air. Now, that's going to have two effects um, depending on whereabouts you look at it. So what we'll do is we'll start at the um, root. So clearly with a, a introduction of a rate of descent flow, it's gonna go against the induced flow. 
that's going to have the effect of cancelling out some of this induced flow. Um, so what we end up with is the resultant induced flow. And if you want, you can annotate it with a dotted line on the side. But the main point to take away is that we now have a slightly shallower relative airflow, which is now going to give us our new angle of attack. So this is the crux here then. So we've got a rate of descent flow, which is now going to reduce the uh, induce flow. That is going to increase our angle of attack. And if we increase our angle of attack, that's good. That's going to give us more lift. But as we've already talked about, um, we've got uh, quite a large pitch already held because we're sat in the hover. And eventually we're going to get to the point, or we could get to the point, depending on how much rate of descent flow actually starts to uh, impact the route. We're going to get to the point where we're going to hit our uh, alpha critical or our stalling angle of attack. And if we start to stall in, at the route, then obviously we're going to lose all our lift. So that's the first stage. We've managed to initiate a stall at the root, which might not be that noticeable in the early stages. But as you can see, the faster we go down, therefore the, the further out this stall is going to spread, because the faster we go down, uh, the more impact uh, the uh, rate of descent flow is going to have uh, at different stages of the blade as it moves outwards. The other issue we have here as well is if the aircraft has started to lose lift in the middle here, we're therefore going to start to increase our rate of descent. The natural reaction to that is to raise the collective in order to increase the pitch. But as you can see here, all that's going to do is further exacerbate the problem, stall a little bit more of the blade, uh, and therefore increase the rate of descent. So that's the root. Out on the tip, it gets a little bit more complicated. The rate of descent flow is impacting the bottom of the disc. But like we talked about in the beginning, in the, uh, the way that the air managed to sort of leak over the top here, what we find is on the tips, so as you can see, uh, we have the same thing happening where the air is coming up from underneath, either just on the outside or just underneath, and it can get sucked in to the vortices and get channeled around back down through the disc, uh, impacting predominantly on the tip. So even though we've got a rate of descent flow at some of the tip, at the very far ends of the tip, we're actually increasing our induced flow. And the effect is pretty apparent here, in that we have now reduced our angle of attack. So even though we've got a rate of descent flow, what we find is actually the IF goes up now, and therefore our angle of attack comes down and if our angle of attack comes down then our lift comes down and essentially we end up in this uh, awkward position where we are creating no lift at the center at the root and at, on the tip we're actually gradually um, creating less and less lift so overall the disc is creating less lift and starting um, an ever increasing uh, uh, rate of descent down towards the ground. That's probably much all you need to do in terms of the diagrams uh, for this particular uh, scenario. Uh, but the main thing you can pull out of it now is the so what. So the requirements, what do we need to do to get into this, this situation? Well, you can literally pull it straight out of the diagram. So number one, in order to get to a situation where we are going to stall the blade, we need to have pitch on it. In order to have pitch on it, we need power on. Next one then, in order to um, start to reduce our induced flow to the point where we do stall the blade or increase our induced flow on, on the tips, we need a rate of descent. And in this particular scenario, 
for vortex ring, we need a high rate of descent. And that's usually in the region of about 500 foot per minute. That's very much a rough rule of thumb ballpark, um, and that changes very much dependent on the aircraft. And the last one then, uh, we touched on it briefly at the beginning, but um, if we are now starting to move forward, um, like we do in translational lift, and we move away from these vortices, and we allow them to shed behind the, um, the disc, then we're not gonna have the same impact here. So low indicated airspeed essentially is going to be um, the third and final requirement to get yourself into this position. Okay, so what's it gonna look like? Okay, so first of all, we've already touched on it. Um, when we get into this situation and we, it starts to build, we've already talked about the fact that we're gonna recognize uh, a rate of descent and it's going to be increasing. Um, or it might just be high, but generally speaking, as we've talked about, it's going to increase uh, the longer you lead this. Uh, we've also got the problem that we are uh, moving at the distribution of lift around, so we're losing lift in the middle here. We're also going to be creating uh, differences in lift um, on either side, and depending on where the actual wind is at the time, you're gonna find a changing distribution of lift all over the disc, and that's gonna give you random pitch and roll. And then the last one here, as you gen generally get, if you've got relatively low amount of lift anywhere on a control surface uh, or a wing, then it suddenly becomes very difficult to control. Um, so you'll find that you've got uh, delayed or poor controllability or just sluggish controls. So how are we gonna get out of it? Key takeaway then, in order to get out of this, thinking back to the requirements, okay, is we ultimately need to get some speed on. As soon as we get some speed on, um, or get ourselves away from these vortices on the end and start to move away from the induced flow um, or start to blow the induced flow behind us in, in one way or the other, then we can get ourselves out of the situation. So forward cyclic, and you'll hear lots of different um, ideas um, and techniques that have been sort of researched or uh, trialed, uh, but the primary one you just want to remember is just forward cyclic and that will just drive the airspeed up and get you away from that induced flow. Uh, the second one, which is going to be very unintuitive at the time, is to reduce the power. And that clearly, the effect that's going to have uh, at the route for a start, if you reduce the power, that's going to reduce that collect the, um, the pitch on the blade. Uh, which is going to bring the aircraft back below its um, critical angle of attack and you'll start to create lift again and at the same time on the tip for a start you're going to start to uh, produce less lift um, but if you can produce lef less lift um, then you're going to produce less of a uh, severe vortice as well but the primary effect is going to be on at the root. So where you're going to see this pretty much any approach. And by that I mean um, just losing uh, sight of either the rate of descent or the airspeed as you come in onto an approach. Uh, but most notably, it's gonna be on a steep approach. Where, generally speaking, on a steep approach, you're gonna get a, uh, have a high rate of descent because you're gonna be on a, on a steep glide slope. Um, and towards the end of that approach, you're going to slip back down below 
um, the sort of the ideal airspeed. Um, quick stops then. So if you did a quick stop, then that final phase of a quick stop where um, you drop down into the sort of low airspeed bracket is usually the point when you're going to be pulling a lot of power as you go up to up the back of the power curve. You're going to be pulling a lot of power uh, to prevent the aircraft from descending and at the same time going down through the um, through the low airspeed bracket. But also you might actually accidentally end up with a, a rate of descent on. It's unlikely, um, depending on how how good your quick stops are. PFLs. So clearly, right at the bottom of a PFL, when you're doing your flare recovery, you have a high rate of descent, uh, and you also are aiming to get the aircraft down into the low airspeed bracket, and then you're yanking in the collective and putting a lot of pitch in that blade. So a very good example of where you're likely to fall into this sort of uh, bracket. But the very nature of the, the flare recovery, generally speaking, removes the rate or should remove that rate of descent. Uh, so you don't fall into the the, uh, the trap. Uh, and then the last one, which kind of links a little bit into um, the approaches, is just any kind of downwind approach. A downwind approach, generally speaking, you've got uh, the wind coming in behind you, so therefore your airspeed is going to be that much lower. Uh, so you're instantly into that bracket where you'll probably be right down into the low airspeed bracket whilst maintaining a high rate of descent and your power on. Final bit, just to clarify there, um, we talked about the high rate of descent being um, around about 500 foot per minute and beyond in terms of low airspeed. When we get down below 30 knots, usually that's the sort of area where we're, we're going to start to um, experience the effects of the of the, the vortices and also the induced flow a little bit more. Very much aircraft dependent though. So that pretty much covers uh, Vortex Ring. Um, as always if you have any points, queries or criticisms feel free to put it in the bottom uh, and I'll rectify it. Any questions also add them in as well. Cheers!